Welcome to this series of three presentations prepared for the webinar, The Pathway to Test Guidelines from Science to Standards for Nanomaterial. These presentations are brought to you through the projects NanoHarmony and NanoMet, which are working together to support the development of test guidelines and guidance documents suited for the use of nanomaterials. My name is Mar Gonzalez, and this is the second presentation of the series with the title, The Role and Processes of OECD for Global Test Guidelines Development. You can find the rest of the webinar series on YouTube through the NanoHarmony website. This webinar will take place on the 16th September 2020 at 14 Central European Summertime, which you are welcome to attend. Details regarding the webinar, the presentation registrations, can be found on the NanoHarmony website, which is indicated at the end of this presentation. If you are seeing this presentation before the webinar, please feel free to submit questions to the online form also found on the NanoHarmony website. We will be pleased to answer them at the live online discussion session on the 16th September. So I work at OECD specifically for the chemicals program and in particular in assisting with projects related to the safety of nanomaterials. At the end of my presentation, I hope you have a good overview on the role that OECD test guidelines plays in assisting governments in managing chemicals and the importance of collaboration from different stakeholders in developing safety management tools for nanomaterials. An important point to remember is that the OECD is an intergovernmental organization. As such, its program of work and outputs are agreed by its 37 member countries. We have several official bodies addressing different aspects of chemical management, such as test guidelines, nano safety, hazard assessment, exposure assessment, amongst others. These decision bodies are attended by experts from ministries, ministries and agencies responsible for the safety of chemicals. In addition, the expertise is enriched by participants from other organizations, including industry, NGOs, animal welfare organization, and other international organizations that together broaden the expertise and perspectives, but ultimately also seek to identify synergies, complementarities, and consistencies in approaches. As many of the same chemicals are produced in more than one country or are traded across countries, Different national chemical control policies can lead to duplication in testing and government's assessment, thus wasting the resources of both industry and governments. In addition, differences in regulation and test standards discourage research, innovation, and growth, and they increase the time it takes to introduce a new product onto the market. To avoid inefficiencies for governments, the OECD developed a system called the Mutual Acceptance of Data, MID, or the MAD system. The MAD system is an internationally legally binding agreement. It has two main components that together ensure the development of harmonized chemical safety data. The first one are OECD test guidelines, and the second, the OECD principles of good laboratory practice, of what we call a GLP. Together, they strive for a single quality requirement for tests. It, should, it is also open to non-members that wish to adhere and that have complied with the GLP standards. At the end, the result is that the test done in one adherent country must be accepted in all adherent country. This is the concept of tested one, accepted everywhere. If you wish to know how this function in practice, I invite you to click on the video link. It is a short visual explanation on how this works and explains the benefit benefits. To enumerate a few, reduce animal tests, harmonize quality and reliable data, which will lead to a trust environment with the uh, adhering government. It is really about um, confidence to accept data from other countries. Today, this presentation focuses in one of the components of MID, which is the development of test guidelines. So test guidelines are a collection of the most relevant internationally agreed test methods used by governments, industry, and independent laboratories to determine the safety of chemicals and chemicals preparation, including pesticide and industrial chemicals. They are triggered by a regulatory need, by a data requirement. 
They are meant to contribute to international harmonization of hazard and risk assessment. They address a health or an environmental concern. Test guidelines can be divided in different categories uh, to address different endpoints, such for example, FISCAM endpoints, uh, ecotox, environmental fate, human health effects, and pesticide residues chemistry. Today, there are more than 150 test guidelines. They are regularly updated and replaced by new ones to reflect the latest scientific advances available. In the case of nanomaterials, it became obvious that their specificity required that in some cases, amendments were needed to existing test guidelines and in other, new test guidelines specific to nanomaterials needed to be developed. At the end, and this is, uh, this is true for, for all chemicals, including nanomaterials. What we want to achieve is that the result, we have harmonized testing methodologies that are robust and reliable for governments to base their decisions. Mindful of animal welfare considerations, so the three R principles, mindful of economic implications of testing, and they should also broadly accessible. A major feature of test guidelines that ensure regulatory acceptance is that the test is validated. And I mean that is reliable and repeatable. As such, the proposed method needs to have demonstrated relevance and reliability through intra and interlaboratory studies and with demonstrated applications and limitations. As you can imagine, developing test guidelines require time and resources. Luckily, we not always need to develop new test guidelines for assessing nanomaterials. In some cases, existing methods are applic applicable to them. Nevertheless, specific guidance needs to be given to the study director. If this is the case, the OECD developed guidance documents that will assist in applying existing test guidelines under specific circumstances. Worth noticing that guidance documents are not covered by MAT. But on the other hand, guidance documents are faster to develop and revise. In this slide, I would like to show what are the different steps for developing test guidelines or a guidance document. The first step is that we need the science that can support a proposal for a new test method. So new proposals are brought to the OECD by a lead country, for instance, and discussed by expert groups. So these expert groups are uh, composed of uh, uh, researchers uh, from academia, regulators that are nominated by governments and that they will address a specific uh, kind of endpoint. So you will have, for example, expert group on fiscal properties or ecotox or uh, that are, have an expertise on human health. They will be discussing the available methodologies and assist in finding a consensus on what could be a standardized method while ensuring consistency with other existing test guidelines methodologies. At the end, all the countries will need to agree the completion of a method. Uh, and when this is done, the new test guideline will automatically be part of the mutual acceptance of data agreement that I mentioned at the beginning. As such, a method that can be used by different jurisdictions in regulating nanomaterials. In the case of nanomaterials, the OECD identify a number of adaptations needed on existing nanomaterials. And as I mentioned before, they need to develop new test guidelines. Although there were some, uh, a number of projects under development since 2014, there was a necessity to speed up the work. In view of the resources needed for this endeavor, Germany launched the Malta Initiative by approaching the EU and other EU members to request political and financial support to develop and amend test guidelines and guidance documents to ensure that nano-specific issues for fulfilling regulatory requirements were addressed. This triggered uh, a number of new projects uh, financed by the EU uh, that uh, should ensure a faster development of test guidelines to respond to existing data requirements. So as I mentioned, the EU supported this work and funded some projects such as NanoHarmony, which is now a major driver in developing the methods that will be brought forward under the OECD umbrella. The outcome of these projects 
are an example of the interaction between science and regulation, and most of all, the complementarity between the development of science and the development of tools for regulatory purposes. At the same time, the EU funded a three-year project called Nanomet, which will ensure the OECD has the necessary resources to cope with the increasing amount of projects that are now under development and that should lead to a number of new test guidelines and guidance documents for the safety testing of nanomaterials in the coming years. So just, just to close my presentation, I would really like to, to remind you that uh, the test guidelines are harmonized test methods for the safety assessment of chemicals, including nanomaterials, that address regulatory needs. They are discussed and agreed by OECD member countries, not by experts. So this is an important feature because at the end, these are used by, um, by regulators uh, worldwide. Uh, once a test guidance is agreed, it will become part of the mutual acceptance of data, and then it will become legally binding by all adherents to the mutual acceptance of data system. Uh, if you want to know more, I really invite you to, to look at this uh, website. In the NanoHarmony website, you will find more information about this webinar and at the other presentation of this series. And you will also find information about the OECD work on test guidelines and the NanoMet uh, project. So thank you very much for your attention and I look forward to see you at the webinar. <laughs>